What is going on everybody? It is Tech Geo and today we are going to be talking about my first quarter ever as a tech sales account executive and if I missed my quota. All right, y'all. Now, before we dive into the video, as y'all can see, I got the new light set up today. I have it orange or like an orange color. I don't know how it's looking on camera, but let me know down below. Do you guys like this new lighting setup? I like to switch it every so often. I started off as bluish purple, went to green. Now I'm on orange, uh, depending on what season I'm in, somewhere around the corner. So let me know if y'all like the color. And then also we got the Celsius of the day. Celsius, if you're watching, you're looking for a tech sales account executive to sponsor sponsor your boy so without further ado what is my quota in tech sales as an account executive as you guys know as an ae you have quarterly quota and so your goal is to hit your quota every quarter but really what matters is if you hit your quota for the year but they measure it in quarter so for my quota what is exactly my quota as a tech sales account executive now I remind you i am an smb account executive meaning i'm working with smaller companies not mid-market not enterprise so these are smaller deal sizes but for me personally my quota is 50k per month or 150k arr meaning annual recurring revenue so that's going to be deals that are our net one or net closed for 150k in a quarter so that is my quota for my quarterly quota and then if you want to put that in a yearly perspective that would be 600 thousand dollars or 600k in ARR so that's my quota as an account executive an SMB account executive in tech sales at the moment all right now you guys know what my quota is as an SMB and account executive to be honest with you all my goal is not to hit my quota my goal is actually to exceed it so I want to let you guys know on my personal quota and my personal number and what I truly want to hit and like I said my goal is to exceed the number that I currently have but this is the same mindset I had as an SDR so for an example if you're an SDR you need to book let's just say 10 meetings a month and you probably need to get maybe five qualified meetings a month because not every meeting you book hey sometimes they might no show or sometimes they might not be a good fit for the solution and so if you hit that 10 meetings you'll probably get that five qualified meetings and so even as an SDR if my goal was 10 meetings I was actually shooting for 15 or even 20 meetings because if I fell short of my number I always knew that I would hit my quota and so that's always been my mindset to always exceed the quota and set higher targets and then reverse engineer to what I need to do to hit that target. So if it's 50 calls a day, then I would hit 50 calls a day. If it's 10 emails a day, like whatever it is, just figure out what that number is and constantly push through it and say, you might even go over the number or you might go under, but as long as you put in the work every day, that's truly all that matters. And so I'm carrying that same mindset to an account executive. If, hey, my number is 150K in ARR per quarter. I want to exceed that. And I'll let you know my personal goal is $1 million in closed ARR. So deals that are, that are closed one. So 1 million in ARR for my first year in account executive. That's my goal. And it's, it's a lofty goal. And like I said, it's my first year as an account executive. So for someone to come in and close a million dollars as their first year as an AE, I think that'd just be a great story. And truth of the matter is like the more deals you close, the more money you get paid. So that's a big driver for it. But two, I just want to really push myself to achieve a goal that I don't even think, well, I do think it's possible that is above the number that I'm trying to hit. So just exceed the standard and just some advice for anyone looking to get into tech sales or wanting to get in tech sales. If you exceed your number and you exceed the standard for what's currently at your fingertips and you go above and beyond, that's how you get promoted into that next role. It's by being a high performer and sales is all about performance. If you underperform, they'll probably let you go. If you're doing your job, you might stay. You might not get promoted. You could get promoted depending on the size of the company but if you're exceeding your number on a quarterly basis quarter after quarter after quarter i mean that's gonna really set you up so when the opportunity does strike that you'll be the first one to get promoted and all you guys know i'm an smbae but hey i want to go into a mid-market account executive role and close bigger deals and then i want to get into an enterprise account executive role and close six figure deals so that's kind of where i'm headed and what i'm looking to do but in order to do that you need to outperform the number that you're currently at and so that's my personal goal as an account executive in my first year as an ae all all right, now the question and the answer to this video you guys all have been waiting for. I'm gonna let you guys know, when you move into a new position, new role, I don't care if it's in tech, if it's at McDonald's or any employer, whenever you're starting a new position and you have a number to hit or you have something you need to do and it's your first time trying to hit that number, you wanna hit that number to make a good impression, especially when you have people vouching for you or brought you from another company. So 
To answer your question, did I hit my quota as an account executive in my first quarter ever? And the answer is yes. I hit my quota as an account executive in my first quarter ever. So I actually exceeded it. I don't know the exact percentage. I just closed the deal not too long ago, but it's a little bit over 100%, maybe 110%, could be 120%, I would say, something along those lines. But I did hit the number and this month was a lot slower. So we're currently in April. You know, I've only closed like one or two deals this month. Usually I try to do at least five to eight, but I had a really strong month in February that really set me up. And so I hit my quota, hit 100% of it and like i told you guys i want to exceed it so i'm trying to close more deals before the the month ends but it's good just to sit back and there's a lot of things you can learn from every sales call from every email everything as you progress is you want to learn from every deal you want and every deal you've lost and so if you lost a deal why did you lose it and just constantly improve deal after deal and that's truly going to set you up to one stay on pace to keep hitting quota but to actually do better in terms of performance on the next quarter so that's kind of where I'm at. So yes, I hit quota as my first AE ever. And I do truly want to document this entire journey. I'm going to really help people one who are looking to break sales in SDR. But hey, if you're in SDR right now and you want to get to an AE, like I want to document everything and teach you guys everything I know on how I'm doing it as an AE and what I'm learning and how I'm truly or trying to get better. So but yeah, I did hit my quota, which is super exciting. All right, now I want to give you three tips on how to close more deals as an account executive. And these are all lessons that I've learned the hard way that I would have wished I learned sooner and I wish I could have implemented it from the beginning. So if I could give you three gems on how to close more deals as an account executive in tech sales, I'm gonna give them to you right now. So number one, and this is by order of importance, okay? Secure next steps. Now let me take a sip of my Celsius because this is super important. Now, what do I mean by secure next steps? What I mean by secure next steps is when you have a meeting, right? Your discovery call or the first meeting you have with a prospect, when it comes to the tail end of the call, always secure the next step. Meaning while you're on the call, let's schedule a second meeting. That could be one. It could be a demo of the platform. Two, that could be getting someone else involved from their team that is a decision maker. Or three, they need to bring in someone from the other side of the team, like whatever it is, like figure out what that next step is, whether it could be any of those things, but just get a meeting in place. And what I'll tell you is, hey, sometimes if you ask the first time and they say no, ask them again. If they say no twice, like, hey, John, I understand that you're not looking to book a meeting, but I have a busy week coming up. It'd be a lot easier for me to pull up my calendar and book it. Are you open to it? So ask three times if they go past three times and they give you like they don't schedule a call like hey no worry let me just send you what you're looking for and i'll send my calendar link to you as well and do it that way but i've noticed that if you don't secure the next step like hey some people are really good about clicking on your calendar link and booking a next call but some people will really take their time to book a meeting and if they don't book a meeting then that deal probably just goes quiet and it just goes ghost so always secure a next step second tip lesson that i would recommend make sure you have the decision maker involved on this deal that you're working so if if the decision maker is the VP of sales, if the decision maker is the CEO, always get the decision maker or whoever the person that's signing off on the quote, make sure they're in the call and that you speak with them directly. Because what I've noticed in, in some of the deals that I've worked on, is, hey, I'm having amazing conversations, securing next steps, providing everything that we're looking for. Everything sounds good. And then I got happy ears. So this is a, a terminology that my VP of sales uses, but happy ears is when you're listening to everything they're telling you and everything's going well and nothing's going wrong. I mean, you're just getting super excited. Usually when things sound too good to be true, they probably are. And I've had a happy year before where like, hey, this is a huge deal. It's going to go super fast. They're ready to go. And then sometimes it doesn't work out. So don't get happy years and always get the decision maker involved and make sure you address their concerns, why your solution is valuable and why they need it to really get that deal moving forward and just have a higher probability to close it because you don't know if the person you're talking to, one has just enough pull internal to get that thing pushed over to the end. And two, you don't know if this is something that they're trying to do for themselves or is it for the greater good of their company. So make sure you just get the decision maker involved into the conversations as early and on as possible so that you can save as much time and it's not getting dragged out without having potential to close. Now, tip and lesson number three, I think this is, this is very important, is building the need of your solution. You need to have it the framework of, hey, it's not a nice to have, but it's a need to have and really build up that need of 
of your product. Hey, they can be curious, but how do you make them desire what you're selling and not just doing a little research and kind of just, you know, seeing what's out there, like really build the use case, build the need, like why they're looking for it. How will that help their company? If you do implement it, what are you going to potentially win? Are you going to win more opportunities? If you don't do it, do you lose more opportunities? Like why should you should be doing this? Like everything, all those questions and, and really build the need because the bigger the need, the more budget you unlock, the more budget you lock, the easier it is to close that deal. So if you're not building the need of your solution, then why would they purchase it? So you really need to have that decision factor and really just scale on the need. Forget everything else, just focus on the need. And if you build that need high enough, you'll be more likely to close that deal. All right, y'all, that's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you are looking to break into tech sales, I have a tech sales private community that I'm looking to launch very soon, where we have live coaching calls, unreleased videos that are not on my YouTube, and a like-minded community of everyone trying to break into tech sales and level up in tech sales. The waiting list is fully live. Click the first link in the description to get access to it. And without further ado, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.